Hello, hello, Crafty Crandall fam. It's Crafty Crandall here. Today I am painting a piece from the movie Sing 2. I'm doing this using my jelly gouache and I am so excited about it. This piece was just a burst of inspiration from the video because it was such an amazing film. Truly, the visuals in Sing 2 were just incredibly inspiring. Uh, I highly recommend that you go watch it, especially if you're an artist yourself. I truly believe that anyone can be inspired by not only the story, but also just the animation style and the visuals. The amount of detail in just the entire film was phenomenal. They did a really great job, and I am so excited to be painting today uh, one of the scenes from the character Calloway's house. His house is a secluded uh, in the middle of the wilderness, just gorgeous house. And I really wanted to paint it because it really sparked an interest in me while I was watching the movie. I'm trying to do this via jelly gouache, which I thought would be the correct medium for me to try to do this. Uh, so I started with some color blocking, just laying down the base colors as best as I could match them to the reference. And then went back through and started adding my shadows as a second layer uh, going in with my paints. I want to just touch on for a moment how difficult it was to find a reference. I thought in the movie, oh my gosh, I should take my phone out and take a picture so that I can paint this later. But I then rethought to myself, no, it'll be fine. I'll be able to find it online later. But lo and behold, searching online, the best I could find was the reference that I'm using, which doesn't really capture the entire house. The house had a really cool shape to it, and so what I hope to do is rent the movie later, once it's a little bit cheaper to rent and it's out of theaters, and then take the screenshot myself so that I've got a reference to do a larger scale painting in my etcher sketchbook, which has hot press paper, as opposed to my illo sketchbook, which I'm using for this piece, which is just mixed media paper. So I couldn't really layer as well as I wanted on this paper. And that was what really held me back from just continuing to add more and more to it. I decided to stop the piece at a point and I'm going to follow it up basically with a follow on piece because this landscape is just so inspiring and I do really want to do it justice as best as I can, and I do think that gouache was the correct choice for this, ultimately. Um, I just, again, want to want to do it justice with the reference that I saw during the movie, not the reference that I was able to find online. So, long story short, expect a redo of this painting in the future once I am able to rent the movie at a, a cheaper price. Right now, it's like $20 to rent, so not gonna do that anyway continuing on with my painting process for this so you see me working on the mountain the mountain was probably the most fun part of this piece i really enjoyed adding just all of the little divots and um, details to the mountain it was great to work in those colors and i think i did a decent job of capturing the colors Throughout this piece, in fact, I think that I did a decent job of just capturing the basic outline of what the piece looked like. However, that said, I think that the, the illumination anim animators just did a phenomenal job at adding so much detail. Like, it would be physically impossible for me to capture every single little detail and, you know, get it right, get it colored correctly, etc. Um, I'm just not that skilled of a painter. I accept that and, you know, I'm going to do the best that I can to portray it in my artistic style and you know, with the skills that I have. I think that that's kind of just my goal with every single piece that I approach. I really want to make improvements and I want to become a better artist, but at the same time, I do have to accept that I have limitations. I'm not that great of an artist, so just to continue working and continuing putting in the hours of practice that you need to become a better artist, um, you know, that's really what I'm doing with this piece, and I am so incredibly happy with the results of that. Um, I definitely tried to keep the level of detail throughout this piece and the composition consistent. So I didn't want to like overly work the mountain and then not work as much on the house or 
work really hard on the house and the mountain and then not do anything in the background. So hopefully in the final product, you guys will agree that I at least achieved that and the composition looks sound for, you know, the piece overall. Here you see me adding the flowers and this piece has so much foliage there are trees there is grass there are flowers absolutely everywhere and it just really makes kind of this really cute like haven of just an amazing estate like i would love to live here <laughs> hidden away from the rest of the world just amazing scenic views lake access it just it looks perfect and i don't blame calloway for secluding himself from the world in this space after the death of his wife so that is the premise of the character who lives here and he is a musician so amazing space for a creative outlet such as music or artwork and just really i think what drew me to it as a reference if you guys have seen the movie Sing 2, I would love to know what you thought about the visuals, about the movie as a whole, the plot, etc. Um, I thought that it was a really great movie. I don't actually remember much of Sing 1, but I I liked the movie. I, I thought that it was really well done. And uh, little bursts of inspiration like this are really important to take when you get them. I have definitely found that any time that I've been super inspired to paint something, that I need to jump on that and take that inspiration. So I painted this like the next day after I saw the movie and I was really excited about it. It was a piece that really caught my eye and garnered a lot of inspiration. And I think that those are the pieces that as an artist, you're going to grow from the most. At least in my experience, that has definitely been the case. I've really grown from all of the pieces that I've had that have just been a huge spark of inspiration all at once. And to be honest, it doesn't happen that often. A lot of people talk about waiting for inspiration to hit. And if you wait, you're not going to produce that much work because inspiration, at least in my case, is few and far between. There will occasionally be a song that is so inspiring and I must paint it. There'll be something like this that has a visual component that I'm just really excited to represent in my sketchbook or on a piece of paper in my own way. And those moments are fantastic and I highly recommend jumping on them again, but don't wait for them. Keep practicing your, your trade. Keep going with your artwork in spite of not being inspired. Just continue to produce, continue to fail and make pieces that you're not necessarily excited about or not particularly inspired by so that when you have that burst of inspiration, you have the skills to approach it a lot better. Uh, I think that's kind of my key takeaway of this video is go forth, conquer, <laughs> make the piece that you're excited about, but don't stop producing artwork in between. Make sure that you are indulging your artistic habit as often as you can and just building your skills. And, you know, perhaps that inspiration has nothing to do with like a visual or a, a sound element or wherever you derive your inspiration from. Typically, perhaps that inspiration is in the learning aspect. I know that a lot of people, including myself, are driven by the prospect of learning new things. And so, you know, that can also be a really powerful motivator to try new things in art, push yourself, challenge yourself to a piece that you don't think that you can accomplish. That's what this piece was for me. I looked at this and said, oh gosh, <laughs> I don't know if I can paint that, but I went for it and I'm really excited with the results. So I would definitely encourage you to get out there, get creating, just keep working on it. Talking a little bit more about the painting itself, the house was so much fun to do. Uh, I really enjoyed the colors. I love a good pop of red in an otherwise, you know, cool tone dominated piece. It was great. Um, I really liked the like anatomy of the house. Again, when I paint the, the piece that I want to paint of the final house, um, that will be, I think, a little bit better because it is just a gorgeous house um, and you don't really get to see it in the reference that I found online. But 
Um, overall, the house was probably my favorite part of the piece, and I think that it was really fun. And then kind of a cool element in this piece was the foreground here, which was literally just this palm tree. This palm tree was super fun as well, and I really liked just adding the individual breast strokes to it. I think that it was a kind of a, an interesting element compositionally because it's the only thing really in the foreground other than, you know, maybe like the grass on the other side, but for the most part, it dominates the foreground and it adds a lot of life to the piece in my opinion. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments. Um, compositionally, I mean, this was a movie poster to my understanding. Uh, so obviously professionals thought that it would look good and you know, I agree with them. Compositionally, this piece was super fun, and hopefully the reference that I capture uh, through a screenshot will be just as compositionally pleasing as this one was. Um, hopefully. We'll see. Keep your fingers crossed for me. <laughs> So just adding in the final details of the house here, again, I just think that it was a lot of fun. Um, architecturally, I don't think I did a great job of portraying the uh, various architectural aspects, I guess. Um, there should have been more curvature to the house, and I don't think you can really see that. Um, but alas, it was still fun to paint, and I think that you know, it at least with the shadows that I managed to get in there kind of portrays at least two faces of the house, whereas in realistic in 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 reality there were three faces I think that you were supposed to be able to tell the difference between. But this is what I mean. We learn. <laughs> I learned a lot painting this and I am very excited to continue to work with jelly gouache, con excited to continue to work in this sketchbook and just create some really cool pieces in the future and take you guys along for the journey. Here you have the requisite aesthetic tape peeling that is a must in any and all uh, art that you do with tape. <laughs> Again, I use the MT brand masking tape. I love this tape. It's fantastic. It works really well. Um, and it comes in a million really cool colors. So I get to choose a new color every paint, every painting that I do. And I really love doing that. Additionally, it works fantastically on the Illo sketchbook. This mixed media paper did really hold up quite well. On the house in the upper left hand corner, the paper did give away though. It was the first time I've experienced it with this this paper and it was probably because I went over it multiple times. But as you can see, I had just that purple streak up in the upper right hand corner and unfortunately it, you know, didn't work that well. <laughs> but other than that, this was such a joyous experience. Thank you guys so much for watching and letting me take you along on this journey. Please like this video if you liked it. Consider subscribing to this channel, hitting that notification bell, and just hanging out with me in the future. <laughs> I really appreciate you guys. Have a great day, night, or evening, wherever you guys are, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye! <laughs>